do you feel happy when you're around people? It's, there's a strange bluntness to that question. Right. <laughs> These days, I, I think I'm very, like, almost manically grateful to go for a walk with someone. Because there are often people I haven't seen in months. So there's a kind of happiness of rarity of the social occasion. Do you ever get bored of that feeling? Uh, the feeling of of that that social rarity. Yeah, I think so. Which is why I want to cultivate closer friends, fewer closer friends. And you don't worry that that also get bored. I do. Uh, well, I think. The collective has shown me a way that I love working with my friends. Mm -hmm. That work is such a strong drive for me to have in this way that's also play, of course. Right. That to me is where the eternity of friendship comes in. As work, play. Work, yeah, work, play, and of course love and intimacy. Mm -hmm. But when it's associated with work and play, and maybe this is back, to, we're going back to race here. Right. I want, I love productivity in my friendships. And it doesn't have to be like making a book, but just making, the act of making itself. I suppose you're, you're stuck with the lens of productivity, but by playing with it, you can escape it. You can't totally get rid of it. But with work play, you can actually noodle your way out of your racial, you know, background. And it's and the racial ground is what causes either hyper productivity or hyper guilty unproductivity. It's very bipolar, right? Um, it makes me like try to seize hold of of the complete addictive um, black hole experience, and then bounce back into like manic productivity. It has this like unbalanced cycle. Whereas this work play thing that I do with workshops and the collective, um, it's very it's very present and aware, and doesn't have to swing into either side of the bipolar. Can you tell me everything you remember about going back to China? Well, there was, it was just so different. Like, people felt so orderly in China. While here in Canada, like, it was a lot more chill and all that. Yeah. Also, things were just so nice in China. So weird. Mm -hmm. It was, like, just so nice there. I'm, like, told all my life that it's not this nice. But it was so beautiful. Like, south of China, Beijing even. It was so advanced. It just seemed like life was so hard there, too, because people were always working. Mm. More so than even here. Yeah. Like, I'm glad I was born here because I feel like I would be such a hard worker in China. Yeah. Like, I, I'm anxious and all that, no doubt. But, like, right. I guess, like, it just seems like even though the quality of life was felt a lot higher in China, I felt like the amount of work people were doing was just so much, too. How, how was your experience? You went during your master's, right? Yeah, and I went to meet my godfather. And they took us out to these extremely lavish meals. It was such a taste-oriented trip. And we would drink like 12 cans of weak Chinese beer. And like four to five shots of baijiu. You know that? Yeah, I love baijiu, yeah. It's such a strong liquor, but it doesn't, it doesn't taste as strong as vodka for some reason. Maybe it's our, you know, genetic disposition. And we would smoke at the dinner table. Yeah. And it, it'd be so nasty indoors, like thick with cigarette smoke and like Chinese cigarettes, you know, heavy shit. And all the while we'd be eating uh, dish after dish and we just left 60% of the food there in a display of wealth. Like, I remember that so well. There was no takeout containers. 
You just ordered way too much and left it there. Wow. Your parents, like, did you visit? Your parents live here, but did you visit your grandparents? Or? Yeah, we visited grandparents and extended family. and um, We visited our village, my like, childhood village that was about to be torn down by the Chinese government. Uh, and they were paying people out to build like high-rise condos there. So a kind of gentrification of the rural areas of China. What was the experience of visiting like the village, your village? It was very rough because one of my great aunts was there and she had a very thick sort of rural accent. I could barely understand. But she was like crying because of how hard her, her life was and how she was about to be displaced by the government, right? And how lonely she was. Um, and it, the, the family politics were all was all like swarming around me, but I didn't have enough context to know exactly what was going on. But I remember it being just very emotional from all sides. Yeah. Did you visit family? Yeah, I stayed with my family for most of it, my father and my mother's side. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember, like, I, I asked to, like, be taken to where my mom and dad grew up. Right. And, like, like, they grew up in, like, you know, government buildings, small apartments. I was just so shocked because, like... I feel like I grew up in such a nicer location here in Canada. Like, just the house. Like, their houses were all very small. Yes. And stuff. And very just efficient yeah. houses, yeah. And I couldn't imagine growing up in those spaces. Right. Um, but it was also just, like, strangely nice. Because, like, I heard... Because, like, it's all so close. Like, you form communities. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, where my grandma lived. Like, there's a backyard. Where yeah. There's a shared backyard. And, like, everyone's just, like, together all, that all the time. Yeah, there's a strong sense of locality there mm -hmm. and a belonging to the local that yeah. maybe you don't have here. Yeah, and you're also a kind of, you're thinking about things, or love especially, as a non-event. Mm -hmm. Or you're thinking against the tradition of event-based um, theorizing on love. And it's interesting because I feel like there's a parallel here that the events, the monoliths of Chinese culture, the great sites, as you call them, are less interesting than the sort of ordinary, the ordinary spaces of people's, like, locality. Yeah. I like, um, of what I wrote about in China after fact, for I didn't write anything about, like, the Great Wall or, you know, the Forbidden City or whatever, but I wrote about, and, like, in my short stories or whatever, I've written about, like, how my grandma shower is in the same location as the toilet so in order to take a shower you have to close the toilet lid <laughs> and then you have to um, hang the curtain and then you have to like shower but with like the toilet always next to you because right. uh, and then you have to like sort of sweep the floors off because yeah. like there's no dedicated shower 